morning and welcome to St Peter's Church in Ipsley. My name is Jackie Street and I will be joined this morning by Alex Street who will bring us our Bible reading which is Romans 7 chapter 7 verse 7 to the end and we'll see what God is saying to us today what message he has for our hearts and our minds today as we look at scripture and spend time in prayer. Let us open in prayer. Dear God, thank you for your amazing power and work in our lives. Thank you for your goodness and your blessings over us. Thank you for your great love and care. Thank you for your sacrifice so that we might have freedom and life. Forgive us for when we don't thank you enough for who you are, for all you do, and for all that you've given. Help us set our eyes and our hearts on you afresh. Renew our spirits. Fill us with your peace and joy. We love you and we need you this day and every day. We give you praise and thanks, for you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 36. It'll be sung by Jason Silver. I do hope you enjoy his singing and the videos. I think it opens the psalms to us in just a slightly different way. And then Alex will follow with our Romans Bible reading for today.
This reading is from Romans chapter 7, verse 7 to the end. Law and sin. Shall we say then that the law itself is sinful? Of course not. But it was the law that made me know what sin is. If the law had not said, do not desire what belongs to someone else, I would not have known such a desire. But by means of that commandment, sin found its chance to stir up all kinds of selfish desires in me. Apart from law, Sin is a dead thing. I myself was once alive apart from law, but when the commandment came, sin sprang to life, and I died. And the commandment, which was meant to bring life, in my case, brought death. Sin found its chance, and by means of the commandment, it deceived me and killed me. So then, the law itself is holy, and the commandment is holy, right, and good. But does this mean that what is good caused my death? By no means. It was sin that did it. By using what is good, sin brought death to me, in order that its true nature as sin might be revealed. And so, by means of the commandment, sin is shown to be even more terribly sinful. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do, for I don't do what I would like to do, but instead I do what I hate. Since what I do is what I don't want to do, this shows that I agree that the law is right. So I am not really the one who does this thing, rather it is the sin that lives in me. I know that good does not live in me, that is, in my human nature, for even though the desire to do good is in me, I am not able to do it. I don't do the good I want to do, instead I do the evil that I do not want to do. If I do what I don't want to do, this means that I am no longer the one who does it. Instead, it is the sin that lives in me. So I find that this law is at work. When I want to do what is good, what is evil is the only choice I have. My inner being delights in the law of God, but I see a different law at work in my body, a law that fights against the law which my mind approves of. It makes me a prisoner to the law of sin which is at work in my body. What an unhappy man I am! Who will rescue me from this body that is taking me to death? Thanks be to God, who does this through our Lord Jesus Christ. This, then, is my condition. On my own, I can serve God's law only with my mind, while my human nature serves the law of sin. Thanks be to the Lord. Thank you, Alex. Paul is continuing here his instructions on the law and sin. When we're driving along a road with no speed signs, can we assume that there's no speed limit? Can we go as fast as we want until there's a speed sign and then we'll know we're travelling too fast and breaking the law? Certainly not. We know really in our hearts and our common sense tells us that there is a speed limit, a law appertaining to the conduct on that road and we need to follow it. In the same way, can we live just as we want until there is a law showing in our face that we're doing wrong? No. Jesus living in us is the law to how we should live our lives. The law of the land is not enough to keep us living a right life because we break the laws through our rebellious nature wishing to do our own thing. Jesus living in us gives us guidelines to live the correct way, to respect others, not to commit anything that will cause pain to others. To live a life that will make Jesus proud to call us his children. This is the life to live, the law living in us through Jesus. We walk through life with spirit living in us, keeping us honest, clean and true. 
it is our faith in Jesus and knowing him, keeping faith in him, and keeping our walk closer to him that makes us aware of the sin in our lives. Not all the commandments detailing sins, but the everyday sins from thought, word and deed, not only in what we have done, but what we have left undone. It is our new self that is convicting us of sin, not the law of the land. So Paul says in verses 17, 18, As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do. This I keep on doing. Now, if doing what I do, not want to do, is no longer who I am, but it is the sin living in me that makes me do it. The sin is not who we are. It's the sin living on us, in us, that makes us do the sin. Jesus living in us gives us the strength to turn away from this sin and do what is right with Jesus. I am made perfect, but the sin still lives in me. The good and the bad compete for supremacy within me. For this reason, we must daily come to the Lord for refreshing and forgiveness. And in Galatians 3, Paul puts it another way. Galatians 3, 21 to 25. It is the law, therefore, opposed to the promises of God. Absolutely not. For if the law had been given, that could impart life, then righteousness would certainly have come by the law. But scripture has locked up everything under the control of sin, so that what was promised, being given through faith in Jesus Christ, might be given to those who believe. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, how I thank you for your book of Romans and the truth it contains about our changed relationship to the law after we have justified by faith, identified with Christ and positioned in him. Thank you that in him we are not under the law but under grace. Thank you that the penalty for our sin has been paid and the power of sin in our lives has been broken by the grace through Christ in Jesus. By the grace through faith in Christ Jesus, our Saviour. Help us to keep our sinful nature nailed to the cross. For in us, there is no good thing, but thank you that you started a good work in us and it will be complete on the day of Christ. Lord, we delight to do your will. Thank you for your word of truth, which delights our inner being as we read and study it. May we grow in grace and not submit to the enticements of the flesh. Heavenly Father, keep us forever mindful of the truth that there is an eternal war that is seeking to draw us back 
into our former fleshy ways. Thanks be to God who delivers us from this inner conflict. In Jesus' name, we thank you. May our lives and witness be honouring to you. Amen. And in our prayer diary for today, we're asked to pray again for the Four Rivers Church. Let us pray for their worship group, who work with the area dean to decide on the pattern of services throughout the group of churches whilst they are in a vacancy. Also, Lord, we pray that their work with Alison Maddox, Dean of Smaller Churches, as they look together to develop more sustainable communities. Lord, we ask for your wisdom as they seek a way forward to spread your love in these communities. We pray also for the schools and the teaching staff in this area, Lord. Hold all these people in your hands. Amen. Lord, we bring to you our church leaders, both in our local churches and further afield. We pray for your Holy Spirit to be upon all the church leaders and lay preachers to give your words to the peoples in the church family. We pray for your Holy Spirit to rest on all who work in our churches, who look after the buildings, the grounds, the admin and the church services, or the baptisms and the funerals. Lord, let your spirit and strength fall on each one of them to bring your words with renewed zeal and enthusiasm to all they meet. Help churches to be open and welcoming to keep your doors open for your people to feel the comfort you offer. Move your church leaders to reach out to more and more and the church members to be your arms and your body open to all who walk in. Amen. Lord, we pray for your intervention where there is war and conflict. We ask that you will encourage dialogue and compromise. Lord, we ask that you protect the oppressed and the innocent people caught up in these war zones, where they just happen to be. And none of this violence is of their making. Lord, we ask you to bring your power down on the leaders of these countries to work towards peace. We pray for those wishing to overtake weaker countries and pray their own power struggle to, and believe their own power struggle is superior and master of all. You are the one master of all, Lord, and we pray for your will to be done in these places. Help the aid agencies to bring food and medicine safely to where it is needed. Protect them as they move out and about and help the Christians to administer your words of comfort to feed their souls as they strive to feed the bodies of those who are cold and hungry and frightened. Amen. A prayer for the world to come to Christ. In Titus 2 we read, for the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in the present age. Father, creation sings of your majesty, created in your image. We are a direct reflection of you. Every good thing comes from you. Every note of love and goodness we feel is rooted in your great love for us. Whether we know Jesus yet or not, let us see each other for the people you have created us to be. Help us to find the good in every person you place in our lives and on our paths. 
You are not a God of coincidence, Lord. Whatever you do is with a purpose. Watch over us and encourage us and love us perfectly. You are faithful to hear us and answer our prayers. You are close to the broken hearted. Father, we are in awe of how you orchestrate the days of our lives and the individual love you have for each of us and our purposes. We are all unique and every person and to every person you bring joy. The Great Commission is ours to spread the gospel as it starts with love. Help us to fill this Great Commission, Lord. Amen. And let us finish with our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And I thank you for being with me this morning. And I will leave you with a song from our music band. Reverend Garth Nathaniel will be here tomorrow morning to open the word of scripture for us. I hope you have a blessed day and I'll leave you with our songs. Oh, spread your wings of mercy. Goodbye. Spread your wings of mercy over me And guide my heart with true humility No shadow of the darkness pressing in Only the holy overshadowing Underneath your wings Shadowing. No refuge will I seek but God alone. No hiding place save only at your throne. Only the cross, the blood to wash my sin. Only the holy. Thank you.